Speaking of Princeton, what's the first that came to your mind? Princeton University, am I right? But Princeton isn't just for Ivy Leaguers. It's a haven for all book lovers and study enthusiasts alike. Even if you didn't snag that Ivy League acceptance letter, fear not. Let me take you on a tour of three delightful book spots around Princeton that are sure to charm any bookworm. As a charming town not far from Trenton, New Jersey, Princeton is a welcoming place known for its rich history, beautiful architecture, and vibrant culture. For people who live in New York or visiting New York City, Princeton is definitely an ideal day trip destination. Hello, my friends. Welcome to Library Hunter. This is Kathy. As a library enthusiast, my last video was an immersive tour inside the beautiful library and incredible campus of Princeton University. People have compared walking around Princeton to walking around posh European towns, and I completely see the resemblance. So if you haven't watched my last video, make sure to check it out. And today, given the fact that the Princeton Library is not open to public, I'd like to take you to three other book places that everybody can explore in Princeton area. And don't you worry, these places are always open to the public. Are you ready? Let's go. Does this look familiar? Our first stop is inside the Firestone Library. But unlike last time when we had to apply for a visitor access, this ground level lobby area holds two incredible spaces that welcome everybody to explore. The Ellen and Leonard Milberg Gallery holds year-round exhibitions, providing the public with various rarely seen treasures. At the time of my visit, the Milberg Gallery was presenting In the Company of Good Books, from Shakespeare to Morrison. This is an exhibition that celebrates the continuous conversation between various authors and their works throughout the decades, showcasing Princeton's precious collection of English literature. The year 2023, marks the 400th anniversary of the publication of William Shakespeare's first folio. The first display case holds three rare copies of Shakespeare's first folio, including the first copy to ever make it into North America. This special folio also contains signatures by various scholars, playwrights, and actors. This tradition reflects a central idea of the exhibition. Writers converse among themselves and across generations, The exhibit shows how famous writers like Toni Morrison and Mary Shelley were inspired by other writers in history. There were handwritten drafts and old books on display. It also explains how different ways of publishing, like newspapers and small shops, helped writers share their stories. The exhibit ends by sharing writers from countries that were once ruled by Britain, underscoring the ongoing dialogue among writers from post-colonial societies highlighting their efforts to redefine cultural identities. The exhibition concludes with a call back to Shakespeare, emphasizing how today's writers continue to engage with his works, featuring an interesting story about Toni Morrison's play, Desdemona. As a Nobel winner, Toni Morrison made a significant influence on Princeton University. As a professor and founding director of the Princeton Atelier, she enriched the academic and cultural life of the university community. I like the way how they connect the literary world with the people of Princeton. On your day trip to Princeton, wouldn't it be nice to check out this library gallery? If you are visiting Princeton with young children, be sure to stop by this Kotzen Children's Library. It is a public resource for children, families, and educators in the greater Princeton community it opens daily to the public and free of charge. For some reason, the library staff was away when I entered. It was dark inside and I didn't find a way to turn on the lights. But let me share some photos from the website. Apparently, they've put a lot of thoughts and efforts to make this space optimal for children readers. The Cotson Children's Library holds a major historical collection of rare illustrated children's books, manuscripts, and educational toys from the 15th century to the present day, in over 30 languages. There is a wonderful space to explore called the Bookscape, which is a picturesque environment with whimsical spaces to read, including a two-story bonsai tree and a cozy fireplace called Hearth of Darkness. When I was a kid, I enjoyed climbing up a cozy tree loft and reading books inside. 
so I'd say it's definitely a great hidden treasure. Bring your kids here and you won't regret. Now, enough for the university library. Let's explore the book places outside the campus. For decades, this Nassau Street book retailer, Labyrinth Books, has been offering an independent community bookstore for students, faculty, staff, and local residents alike. In 2007, at a time when most universities were outsourcing their bookstore operations to chain stores, Princeton had a different vision of the role an independent bookstore could play in representing the values and aims of a great university. Princeton approached Labyrinth, proposing to create a bookstore that would be a resource to scholars and students, as well as to the Princeton community. It is not uncommon that bookstores collaborate with universities, but this close relationship between Labyrinth and Princeton University is definitely a rare find. The 30% discount program for course books is a direct result of how closely the university has worked with this independent bookstore. The university's support of the store also directly helps ensure that downtown Princeton remains diversified and vibrant. From the 1990s until today, there has been a general demise of downtowns with much economic activity being driven to malls and chain stores outside of towns. Besides the close relationship with the university, Labyrinth Books by now has a track record of commitment to social justice causes. They are deeply involved in prison adult literacy programs and the education of the incarcerated population of New Jersey. Labyrinth assists in providing course books for the GED, AA, and BA programs in seven adult and youth prison facilities across the state. In addition to the course-related material, they have worked steadily to build general prison libraries. Isn't it wonderful that a bookstore is supporting the ability of education to transform lives?
Okay, now that we exit this wonderful bookstore, there's just one more destination left on my list. If you enjoyed this book adventure so far, subscribe now so that you will get notified when my next book adventure comes to life. I would categorize Princeton as a college town, given how thoroughly students are incorporated into the local community. Before this trip, I didn't know that much about the town Princeton, except the fact that it's home to this university. As I started to venture out the Fitzrandolph gates, I got to interact with the local community and beautiful landscape. We are now approaching our last stop of this trip, a gorgeous public library located in the heart of Princeton. It is a public facility, is a cornerstone to the civic foundation that serves in the backdrop of the collegiate campus. The Princeton Public Library opened in 1909 and has had three different homes. This new location adopts a modern architecture build, blending in with the surrounding buildings and tones along the main thoroughfare that bisects this part of town. I love this creative art made with an open book. It is a gift from a dedicated friend of Princeton University Library. It is bright and airy and very welcoming. There is a community cafe on the first floor as you enter the building with a used bookstore and small over-the-counter gift shop located on this floor as well. The glass panels provide a sense of elegance and grandeur to the brick and mortar structure, while offering insight to the ongoings within. Knit for Others is an annual tradition program, organized by a dedicated group of generous knitters, suppling the library with a wide variety of knitted items for donation. The librarians told me they are always looking for more knitters. So if you are interested and happen to be in this area, it'd be fun to contribute an item or two. Their Librarian by Appointment program gives you, up to one hour, dedicated with a reference librarian to learn how to easily navigate the resources of the library and how to use the online databases. I'm sure this service is of great help to local residents. This library is a great study spot. It's three stories with plenty of windows and study areas. Each floor has its own unique design and arrangement. A flight of stairs offer open access to the first two floors, while the third floor is more enclosed in nature. The second floor has study rooms you can reserve for an hour, even without the library card.
Parking is pretty convenient, as there is the municipal parking garage located immediately next to the library. You can get two hours free if you validate the ticket in the lobby. Overall, the Princeton Public Library is a great visit and a staple to Princeton living that is worth your visit while you're in town. And that concludes our day trip at this beautiful Princeton town. Which book spot is your favorite? Comment down below to let me know. Now I'm going to take the Jersey Transit train back to New York and continue my adventure there. Bye for now and see you in my next book adventure.